Yo, what's going on guys? So I just finished farming 100 uh, burial chamber maps and in this video I want to show you the results. But first let's talk a little bit about the maps and why would you want to farm it in case you don't know. So first of all, first of all obviously there is a doctor card that drops in that zone and right now it's worth around, around 11 exalts. And burial chambers used to be a very popular popular strategy to farm simply because back then there was no atlas passives so there wasn't really that much difference between each map except for the layout obviously map tier and what kind of divination cards they drop so obviously one of the most popular strategy was to farm burial chambers for that doctor card but since then now that we have atlas passives people have different reasons to farm different zones so uh, they focus on that so i haven't uh, done burial chambers farm in a while mostly because of that reason so i decided to check out how it is in current days so the way i did it i bought 100 barrel chamber maps and each one of them is worth around 7, 7c and I used 4 chisels for 20% uh, quality just alchemy them and to be honest I maybe should have also valved them but that's too late I didn't want to invest too much and also there is a little bit of a risk when you are valing but I was just alchemy them and that's it and if I hit uh, reflect I would reroll them in terms of scarabs, I used divination scarab for uh, uh, increased chance to get doctor card legion for more monsters, abyss also for more monsters and harbinger for even more monsters. And also the reason why I chose these chose these scarabs is because Battle Chambers is actually in a really good position in my opinion uh, in this league because it is actually in a new vast tier which means that you can get benefit from emblematic so you can get additional emblems from farming legion which is why i am running rusted legion scarab and also you get increased amount of monsters from abyss and the abyssal troves uh, drop additional items so this is why i am using abyss also i went for polished for three of them and rusted for legion because in my opinion it was uh, pretty good like economically because let's say for polished harbinger when you are buying rusted ones uh, you're paying 2c per one and you get two harbingers so you're paying 1c per harbinger for po polish you pay 8c per one and you're getting three harbingers so it's like a little bit less than 3c uh, per harbinger and for gilded you would pay 20c so uh, 5c per harbinger so i decided to go for the middle option and i went for three polished ones and one rusted since legion is actually even rusted one is 10c so even though it is in the legion zone maybe i should have went for polished or gilded but i decided to make the strategy a bit cheaper so i went for the rusted one and also my uh, emblems, my warstones I mean, are two Marakev, 90% chance that the army will be Marakev and two for the Templar. Since both Marakev and Templar are uh, Templars are around 70 to 80 C, so similar price. And for the middle passives, I obviously have Secrets of the Stone and the other ones do not matter that much. Just some uh, increased chance to get synthesis map, guardian maps, uh, better progression of awakener and awakening level. I didn't have enough points to get plus one sex and uh, modifier use, so unfortunately I didn't have that. But I also was using sex times every single time when I was running them, so four awakened sex times, and I was rolling for mostly just pack size. If it wasn't any pack size, I would just read all them. So that's pretty much it when it comes to preparation for the maps. And then I actually also was using the prophecies. So one for Tempest 
and one for Plague of Rats, just for some additional monsters. You could do more of them, but I just decided to keep it simple and I only used two of them. Also for the map device, I used the Delirium and Alva. So I actually used 100 Alva missions. So Alva is obviously the best out of any masters because it uh, adds the most amount of monsters into the map. And Delirium is actually pretty nice in uh, Burial Chambers. It actually... Burial Chambers are pretty long map and the longer map is, the, the thicker the fog becomes so you actually get more splinters. So now let me show you the example of the map. So this might li lag a bit, a bit, especially since there is a delirium, delirium and this is the first map I'm running today, so keep that in mind. But the way Burial Chamber is uh, made, it has basically three rooms. There is first big outside room and there is a way in between and then there is a second room. And the way Delirium work is that the further away you are from the entrance to the map, the fog is thicker and you get more splinters. So you actually always hope that the leak mechanics will be in the second room so that you get uh, more splinters. So right now I got one Abyss and one Alva in a first room, so that's actually not great. But still I can get more of them in the second room. And most of the time you will get no uh, league mechanics in the middle room. Also here is a legion, so again that's not really great. And by the way, if you are around some kind of league mechanic, the delirium will stop. So you can use, for example, Abyss, kind of like a pit stop, so that uh, the fog stops. And I always run over the, uh, the white stuff, the eggs and so on, to increase the amount of monsters. Oh, cluster draw. That's a pretty rare draw. Okay, so now let's open Legion. Let's get some juice for the Headhunter. And again, the Delirium is uh, stopped right now. So also I am looting in between because I don't want to run back over here after I clear them up. So looting obviously is not the best because Delirium will right now is resumed, so you have to be pretty fast with looting, otherwise the Delirium is gonna catch, on, catch to you and you're gonna lose some splinters. Also the way Burial Chamber is built, it is a little bit RNG, so the way, like as you can see on the map, the first room and second room is positioned somewhere on the map, and Alva and so on. So all of that is somewhere on the map. So sometimes you can be unlucky and Delirium just suddenly disappears when you enter second or the third room. So it is a bit RNG, but overall I believe it is quite worth it. And most of the time I was getting around 70 to 90 splinters per map. But sometimes if you are unlucky, when you enter the second room, I mean the third room, so this one, the delirium disappears really fast. And when that happens, you get like 30 to 50 splinters. So it's obviously not the best. Uh, when you are in expedition, the delirium actually stops completely. So you can just run around in between the remnants and you are 100% uh, sure that the delirium will not uh, disappear. So let's now do Alva. And also dying is obviously pretty bad because you're gonna spawn at the beginning and Delirium is gonna disappear. But I am using cast on death portal, so when I die I spawn right when I died, but if I die in the Alva incursion, the portal would not spawn, so I would not 
spawn here. So for the expedition, I was basically trying to get as many artifacts as possible. And logbooks, obviously. Also, the amount of monsters is pretty important because obviously you want more... Uh, you want more... Well, more, mo more monsters to have better chance to drop the Doctor cards, right? So I believe around now the Delirium probably starts moving again, so I should be fast, just kill as much monsters as possible. Okay, and I got a lockbox, that's pretty nice. Now let's go fast, so I actually have a chance to kill a boss, because that's the most important part about Delirium, we want to kill the boss uh, because he gives a lot of splinters. Let's get some headhunter stacks from the last incursion and then kill boss pretty fast. And by the way, if you are here, the way the boss works is he's gonna get the uh, souls from the monsters that you kill. And if you stand here, when you open the door and you go here and you start killing stuff, if you don't move a single step, then the boss is not gonna get the stacks. If you even move like here and you kill the monsters, the boss will start gaining stacks from the kills. So it's a good idea to kill as much monsters as possible before moving. Okay, so now Delirium disappears. Let's see how many splinters. 78. So that's pretty average. Not that many other rewards. But just splinters paid for the Delirium itself. So Delirium is uh, pretty good in this zone. Let's loot the leftovers. And that's it for the map. So let's go back and look at the results. So here are five quad tabs that I, well, almost filled. So here is the first one. So this is the most important part. So the most important question, well, how many doctors? So I got actually two doctors and both of them came from the Abyss monsters. So actually Abyss was pretty worth it and the amount of monsters you get from them is actually pretty good and maybe that makes me think if I should actually use the gilded ones so I get two Abysses every single map. But that's obviously RNG and you might get zero from them, you might get two from Legion. So that's just how it went for me. As you can see I also got quite a lot of Simulacrum, I believe around 20 and I got like 50 full emblems and, and actually quite a lot of Templar ones. For the Delirium Orbs, th that dropped from the Delirium at the end, I got them, uh, I believe, 33, 10 Exalts, some of them were uh, raw drops and some of them came from Exalted Shards that you get from uh, Harbingers. I got one Crusader Exalted Orb, I believe I killed like 5 Awakeners in between the maps, so that was the best reward that I got from them, from the Conqueror. Here is around 500C and quite a lot of stack decks. And here are all of the artifacts and around 10 logbooks, I would say. Here is the second tab, which is most of the currency that I got, just a random currency. And here are some leftovers of the currency and some random like fossils catalysts and so on that I got from the random metamorphs and delirium rewards. Here is the map tab, so as you can see quite a lot of maps, easily sustained and decent amount of scarabs and other fragments. And here is the last tab, which is just some random things. I actually got quite a lot of rare uniques, but none of them is actually 
worth that much. I believe only group cool is worth one exalt and everything else is below one exalt. Some guardian maps, two synthesis maps, uh, blighted maps, few mm, gems from Awakener and quite a lot of temples. And I got two tier 3 corruption rooms and two tier 3 gem corruption rooms. So you can actually sell them for I believe like 1.5 exalts but everything else is also pretty decent in terms of like uh, rewards you can get some uh, legion rooms currency rooms and so on and contracts and blueprints are actually also quite expensive i believe i got a few hundred maybe even thousand chaos just from contracts and blueprints okay so now let's look at the spreadsheet so here is the cost of the maps so 100 maps 7 c per 700 c divination were 2.7 and this is why i didn't use gilded because i believe gilded are 15 c so paying 50 uh, for 50 percent additional 12 c is questionable in my opinion but maybe it's worth it if you're using the other gilded scarabs because obviously all of the reward stacks so if you have more uh, let's say abysses then better ch uh, chance to get uh, divination cards is maybe worth it. Uh, 2.5c for Abyss Scarabs, 8c for Harbinger and 10 per Legion. Quite a lot of uh, Chisels, Alchemy, Scouring and Sextants. Uh, and here is a price of Delirium Zanamod. So in total I did spend 5.4 thousand uh, Chaos and that's in exalt is 31 exalt and I did spend 20 hours so almost one full day and here are all of the like most important rewards so two doctors uh, is 3.7k just as you can see here I paid 1.6k for the delirium and simulacrum and delirium op easily paid for it and I made quite a lot of profit and this doesn't include all of the currency and so on that I got from the end reward and the monsters that I killed. For Legion you can see prices of the emblems and most of that, uh, most of the money I got is from the Templar emblems. Here are just the random currency and artifacts. So decent amount of currency from artifacts, 1.9k actually. So. I do believe it is worth to do expedition, even though it is actually quite annoying, I don't really like doing it, it is pretty rewarding nowadays. And here are the three other uh, tabs, so just all of the random currency is 3.3k, in map tab I had 2.8k, and the last uh, tab with uh, contracts and so on, 2.3k chaos. So in total, 23,000 chaos, which is 135 exalts. The cost was uh, 5.4k, so in total profit, so the amount I made minus the cost, 17k, which is 103 exalts. So quite a lot, it is 5.2 exalts per hour, which nowadays with Comparing it to other uh, currency making strategies, it is actually pretty good. It's not the best, definitely. I would say in farming things like Nemesis 3 is gonna be probably better, but it's a bit less annoying. You don't need to roll as many things, you just need to buy scarabs, and that's pretty much it. Mm. Also, as you can see here, the doctors, which are uh, now worth 11 exalts so two doctors are 22 exalts if you compare that to all of the other uh, currency i made from other stuff it is actually not that big part of that profit it's only 20 percent so to be honest it's not really that uh, that important to farm doctors or other divination cards nowadays just the league uh, mechanic from Zanamod, the Atlas League mechanic and current League mechanic easily pay more than just farming some 
random divination card that you get from burial chambers. So I would say if you don't like the RNG, if you don't want to uh, farm burial chambers because you just don't like the layout, there is quite a lot of strategies nowadays and I am actually quite happy that we don't have to farm specific maps just for the divination cards because I believe I farmed burial chambers back in the days for like five, six, maybe even more leaks straight. So we do have quite a lot of other options. I am still gonna probably farm burial chambers from time to time because I just like the doctor farm and a little bit of nostalgia. So strategy is pretty decent, but there is all a lot of other options if you want to do them. So thanks for watching and see you next time.